Welcome to Chapter 1, Part 2 of Mathematica for Biologists. Now we're going to start off from what we learned from the last uh, part, and we're going to we're going to make some more uh, nicer looking graphs, and I'll just show you how to make your graphs that customize the look of your graphs a little bit. So this will be a short part of the tutorial. We're going to start out with these lines of code that we learned last time. So first I'm going to set my directory to where the sample data are. I'll set up this, this variable called data to import our data and then transpose it. And then um, checking the dimensions of the data just to review its nine columns by 100 rows each. So just to, to remind ourselves, I'm going to write a comment here. Um, data structure is um, nine columns, 100 rows each, comprising of three columns of replicate data for three animals. So that would be um, column one, two, and three, animal one, four, five, six, animal two, etc. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plot of all of the plot, all of the, all of the data from animal one, for example. So data one, I'll call it. And so that is, I'm actually going to capitalize the D. Sometimes that's just my shorthand for, for telling me that the, the data has um, more than one column in it. So we're going to do data column 1, data column 2. Remember the double square brackets indicate indexing. And so we should have a list within lists, three columns, of 100 elements each. I'm going to put a semicolon there to suppress the output, and then I'll just plot it. So plot, or I'm sorry, this line plot data one. And we should see three lines. So that's fine. Um, it looks kind of bad. So what we can do is we can change the can change how this plot looks. So we we use that, we do that by doing plot style as an argument in this list line plot command or any plot command. So plot style and then do a dash and then this, um, you make an arrow just by using this, um, this uh, greater than less than symbol. So again, we do this dash, and then um, this symbol, and then when you, once you do a space, then it becomes an arrow. So plot style. And then since there are three plots, this has to be a list. So we do our curly brackets. So we can do, for example, red. In Mathematica, it knows certain colors, blue, green, for example. And so that just shows you how to, how to control it a little bit. If there was only one plot, for example, if we just did the second column, all we need is one plot style. We don't necessarily need a, an element, a list. Um, but another thing you can do is if you want m multiple characteristics, then you do have to use a list. So let's say we want to do a dashed line. We can, use, we can say blue and dashed, both within a list, and make that dashed. Let's say we want to make this thick. You just type in thick. And there's just a few vocabulary words that that Mathematica knows what the meanings of are. There's a handful of colors, a handful of line styles, and things like that, and you'll learn them. If you come up with some word that Mathematica doesn't know, like, um, you know, whatever you want, 
um, it's going to be blue. So if the word is blue, then it means that Mathematica doesn't know what it means yet. Okay. We can do blue dashed. Um, we can also change the thickness as a function. So this thickness is a function, so that's a single pair of square brackets. And you just put in a number. That number is huge, actually. So you can change the thickness more with more control you want. And I'll show you how to control the colors with more control um, in a second. So wouldn't it be great if we could change the colors of these plots interactively? Well, there is a way to do that, and it's kind of weird. It took me a while to figure it out, but we do something called the color setter function. And just pick any color. It could be black, red, whatever you want. And then we get this box, and it's an interactive box, so if you, if you click on this, the box, you can change the color. So now what we do is I'm going to copy this box. So just copy it, and then I write another command called setting. And then my square brackets, and then paste in that box in there. And then if you execute this, it just becomes some value, some color value. So if I press on this, select some color, then we're changing the color. And that becomes an RGB value. So that is the raw data that goes into um, Mathematica telling what Mathematica what color something should be. So if we just copy-paste this RGB color value in there, in our graph, for example, we can make it this color green. But that's really cumbersome. So all I do is just copy-paste the setting where you'd normally have your color. And then we can change it, plots, color, interactively. Shift Enter to run it again. So that is... I think extremely cool. So you don't need, you no longer need this color setter thing anymore. You can just delete that. And you can just save this and, and copy paste it anytime you need it. So now understanding a little bit about how to customize our graphs, I'm going to copy paste this, this setting command up here. And then we can change the color of our three graphs. For example, now they're all the same color. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make lists within lists to define the characteristics separately for each plot. So there's three plots, so you need three major lists, but then each list needs a list of several characteristics. So, for example, this first plot will be green and dash. And the second plot will be some color, which we'll pick later, and um, solid, for example. Oh, actually, solid's not a word. It notes, knows. We'll just say thick. And then the third one will be um, thin, for example. And I'll just change these colors to whatever I want. Nothing artistic here, just to demonstrate the power of Mathematica here. Okay, so that's really cool. So now we can change whatever we want. Um, sometimes also I like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna mass produce these plots. Sometimes I just like to make a style list. So I'm just gonna copy that and say style info equals this and I can replace this out with the style info and you can also imagine you can replace each element of the list with the style for graph 1, style for graph 2 so that way if you're plotting different data later on for example data 2 
for this, the second animal, remember that's columns 4 and 5 and 6. And then we can make a separate plot. And you know how this is going to work out. Since the style info is the same, it's different content for the plots, but it preserves the same color pattern. And then just one more adjustment maybe I'll show you is how to actually change the fonts because this, the fonts are a little bit a little bit small here. And that's something called base style. So I'll do that maybe in one of these plots. So I'm going to write um, base style. It's going to be a bunch of stuff. So, for example, font family times, and it knows a few of them, probably knows as many of them as there are loaded in your computer. So that's one. And then um, font size. say 15 for example. So it changes your font size and you can you can look this up, this parameter up. If you ever want to look up something you just select something and press F1. So sometimes I make a style info up here. Um, whoops, um, let's see, call this text info. And then everything in here will be So that's easy. And then the last thing maybe I'll show you how to do is just label your, your, your axes and your plot in general. So for example, plot label is easy. Plot label is another argument. Your dash arrow here. And then just write whatever you want. Animal one. There you go. And um, it obeys the text styling you, you um, decided up here. And then uh, we can also do something like axes labels, axes label. And since there are two axes, this is a list, the first element being your x-axis label, which is time. And these are string arguments. And then speed on the Y. And there you go. And if you need to edit this later on, again, you can just call this some variable and then export it. Um, as whatever you want. So again, something editable. And there you go. So in the next tutorial, we're going to actually look at how to do some statistics on these data. So we'll start by doing means and standard deviations, and we'll eventually work ourselves up to be able to do an ANOVA to actually see if they're significantly, significantly different.